Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take a quick look at the differences between the rigid bodies within bullet physics within the game engine and the rigid bodies within Blender Render as well because there are two distinct types of activities and you access them differently. So we'll start with the game engine real quick and I just have this basic object here. And for basic bullet physics which is within the game engine, you know, to, to make this move there's many ways. One is through Python, which is how I typically work because it gives me a lot more power. But the easy and quick way to work is using the game logic. So we'll change this from the default over here to game logic. And with this object selected, you can see right here it's named cube. And that's why right down here under this sensor, I'm going to wheel mouse this up, it says cube. So that's the object I'm dealing with. And so I'm going to just give it a keyboard sensor real quick like this and this is one advantage of the game engine is you have sensors like the keyboard there's no easy way to get access to an interactive keyboard with joysticks or things like that within blender render but within the game engine it's super easy so I can just I'll click in here maybe I'll press A and that'll be the A key and then I wanted to do something when I press the A key so I'll come over here and I'll just come over here and put rotation say I'll put five degrees like this and I'll connect these together like that so what I'm saying is when the A key is pressed rotate this on five degrees on a five degree angle like this so let's see what happens if I don't have this little sensor button the pulse set yet here but let's just look so I'll go full screen I'll press P and then when I press A you can see it's rotating now that little red box around there I'll change that real quick you come up here to the window I mean game and I have a show physics visualization, visualization set. So I'll turn that off. I'll press P. And then every time I press that A key, I'm either pressing it or holding it down. And it rotates. So that's one quick way. And that, in this case, it's not yet a rigid body. To turn it into a rigid body, though, to make it do something else, let's come back down to here. And I'll go back in the default window. And then you have to come over here to the physics button right here and change this to rigid body like this and then we'll maybe move it up in the scene here so now it'll act as a rigid body except uh, better put a bounding box around that guy so collision bounds are a box alright so if I press P then you can see it falls there through like that the reason it falls through though is well, a couple things one is this radius here you can't really see the radius very well unless you go to wireframe mode so Z in the wireframe so it is bound all the way around it like that shows it is so sometimes that if it doesn't work that radius should prevent it from bouncing through so sometimes what you have to do is apply the scale to this object so I'll do control A and apply the scale like this alright now let's run it press P now it still hits and goes through so that's not really working the way I want uh, alright so another thing we'll just put it as a uh, triangle mesh so now it knows about all the bounds of it so let's see there there it is so all these little issues let's we'll see from the side see if it actually hits it right there and there it is like that alright so P then if I, I still have that key I could still rotate it like this or I do like that so that kind of gives you the basic setup of the rigid bodies within the game engine Alright, so now let's switch this a little bit. I'll just, I'll take this off of here. In fact, I don't need to, but I will just in case. I'll just get rid of those like that. And then over here, I'll just turn this back to a static object. Then I'm going to switch over to the game engine real quick, I mean to the Blender Render. And now I want to do the same thing. So in Blender Render, instead of pressing P, you would, we'll switch this to the timeline, you press Alt A, okay, nothing's happening, it's not a rigid body, and to change this into a rigid body in here, actually, you could actually s set in a couple places, originally the way we brought up the tool shelf, the T, like this, and you came down here to the rigid body tools, uh, here, and you just add this as active, it'll turn it green, okay, and then if I press Alt A, it's going to fall through there. Just goes straight through. And the way to prevent that is you select the plane here and you turn that passive and you press Alt A. And it comes through. And it's going to do the same thing. Collision. Let's see. Right over here, mesh. Oh, that's set as a mesh. Collision shape is set as a mesh. 
Uh, let me see. Rigid body. Well, that shouldn't that shouldn't go through like that. Uh, let's see. Type active. What is with that? Uh, maybe it doesn't like a convex hull in this. Nope. Let's forget that. Let's just take it just into a regular mesh. Huh. Okay. So there you go. So the mesh in here. So of course these things change all the time. I'm actually probably going to do a full tutorial series uh, between the two as these as keep different versions of Blender change that were two six eight. They keep adding more features and changing. Like they have the dynamic button in here that wasn't in here before. Usually the animated button was there. That way that allows you to pr put keyframes on an object as well. So I'm going to explore this in detail and I'll probably make a whole new series of tutorials and maybe replace the. Um, bullet integration and rigid body dy dynamic tutorials that I already have posted because they were a little more of demonstrations than tutorials I got to looking at. So alright well that's it for now and I'll see you in the next video.